One of the questions I get most on the channel is what is the best desktop environment? And this is one of those questions that is really hard to answer or even give any answer to simply because there's not really a best anything when it comes to Linux. What's best for you may not be best for me. What may be best for me may not be best for you. If that is something that you've heard before is because I've said it many times on this channel. It's basically something that I should have on a t-shirt at this point. Choosing what works for you is going to take some effort and some exploration. You have to try these things and discover what works best for your workflow, what makes you more efficient, what looks best for you, like customizing and ricing if you use that term, how it works with your keyboard and mouse, whether you prefer keyboard shortcuts or you want to move around with the mouse or how it displays your favorites, how it changes wallpaper, like all these little things, everything that goes into making a desktop environment plays a role in whether or not you like it or not. Like you may use Budgie or something like that and discover that you absolutely hate the Raven menu or whatever it's called these days. You know, maybe you don't like having a notification center that takes up the entire part of the screen or you might try Mate and realize that eh, maybe they were onto something when they moved away from GNOME 2, you know, whatever. You have no chance of discovering your likes and dislikes when it comes to a desktop environment if you don't try them. You have to try every one. Eventually, you'll land on one that either works for you very well out of the box or has the options that you need in order to make it work for you. So for a lot of people, really it comes down to GNOME or KDE. Those are the two main desktop environments. And how you use your computer really determines which one of those two you choose. But there are other desktop environments out there that you can choose and you should play with all of them because Somewhere out there is your perfect desktop environment. I'm not saying perfect. I mean the one that's meant for you. You know, you're meant to be together. And you won't discover which desktop environment that is unless you actually try them all. So when someone asks me this question, I have a hard time answering. But there are two desktop environments out there that I recommend a lot or have recommended a lot over the last two years of doing this channel. One of them is KD Plasma, and I have a love-hate affair with KD Plasma. I think it is the most customizable desktop out there. I don't think that can be argued, like, even a little bit. It has the most options of anything, period. If you are into the customization scene and you want to tweak literally every single portion of your desktop environment, KD Plasma is the only option for you. Like, seriously, it has options up the Wahula and... You, there, there are options there that you will never see, actually. So, like, you <laughs> you can go searching for pl options and just spend days going through that settings panel. So, if that's the type of experience that you want, Plasma is the direction you want to go. But if you don't need that level of customization, but you'd still like some, the other desktop environment that I recommend a lot is XFCE. Now, the reason why I think XFCE is so good is because it is very much a little brother when it comes to KDE Plasma. And when I say that, what I mean is that it has a lot of customizability in, built into it, out of the box, similar to the way KDE Plasma does, but it doesn't go overboard. Like, it doesn't have a ton of settings that you may or may not ever use. It has the basics, and it does a really good job with those basics. You can customize the panel, you can customize the theme, and so on. You can do the things that you'd expect to do, and a few extra things, but nothing horrendously on top of that when it comes to like overloading you with options. Now, there are other things that XFC offers that I find really good. So, I like the panel management system that XFC has. It's not a like a drag and drop type of system. It's more of a list based system where you kind of place things where you want inside of a list and that's how it's arranged on the panel. I happen to like that way of doing things. It's not modern by any means, but it works really well. Also, when it comes to performance, XFCE is a very lightweight desktop environment, so you're not going to have to deal with any of the bloat or excessive resource usage when you'd see something like in GNOME or even Plasma sometimes. You know, it's a very small desktop environment. But add on top of that, because it doesn't get updated nearly as often as Plasma does, you have a much more stable experience. Things aren't going to change in XFC because, let's just face it, XFC hasn't changed in 20 years. You know, that thing has looked basically the same forever. And 
it's meant to stay the same. It's meant to be the most stable desktop environment that you could possibly find out there. Even something like Mate. Mate is meant to look like GNOME 2 from yesteryear, right? It's supposed to look like that, but they've constantly updated that thing with new features. It still looks the same, but it has a whole bunch of new features that it's constantly getting, and it's getting more modern as the time passes. With XFCE, well, it does get new features from time to time, and the technologies that are underlying it have increased over time as well. The rate of development is so slow, it just means that your experience with it is going to be very, very stable. Now, obviously, this is a two-sided coin. You're not going to get a ton of new features. You're not going to get the latest technology if you use XFC. So when GTK5 eventually comes out, you're not going to get it for a very, very long time. Like a very, very long time. <laughs> I'm not even sure where they are when it comes to GTK4. They may not have it yet. And if they do have it, it's just like at the beginning stages. Right, right? So that type of technology, is if you want that kind of stuff, XFC is not going to be where you're going to want to be because the development pace is just really, really slow and it's meant to be that way. Like, yes, it's a small project, so it's by necessity really slow, but also the users who enjoy XFC do not want bleeding edge stuff. They want their desktop environment to just work all the time in the same way it has always worked. And that's the charm of XFC. Now, like I said, it's not going to be for everyone. When I recommend this thing, I always put a little proviso on it like you may not like it like there are certain things like the settings panel being broken off into little pieces in in your menu system that you might not really care for so there is a settings manager where all the settings are but but you'll also find all of the little settings that are in that settings manager spread out in their own menu entries inside of your menu system and that can lead to some confusion and also it's a little messy but you know they have menu editors so you could take that stuff out but it's not the way basically any other desktop environment actually does it now most desktop environments can allow you to search for specific things inside the settings panel but the settings panel is just one cohesive thing whereas xfce sometimes feels like all the pieces of the settings manager are all in little pieces like they're all individual apps and that's not again for everyone the panel management stuff isn't for everybody. It's the way they do it. It's the way they've always done it. And like I said, it's not modern, but I like it and it just seems to work very well. So XFC, I would argue, is one of the better desktop environments for people to try. I think that if you are more into stability and low resource usage, XFC is a fantastic desktop environment. And if I were not a window manager user, I would use XFC as my main desktop environment. Now, that's not to malign KD Plasma, because I still think Plasma is fantastic. I think it's buggy, but it can't not be buggy, right? They have too many features, right? That's just the way it is. They add features too fast, and when you do that, you're going to have problems when it comes to stability. It's just the way it works. Now, Obviously, they can work on that, and they do work on that. The one thing about the Plasma crew is that they're always fixing and tweaking stuff. So, if you have an issue, chances are eventually it's going to get fixed. It might introduce new issues, but, you know, that's just kind of the nature of something that moves that fast. If you are a more slow-paced individual, and you're more interested in things that just stay the same, always XFCE is a fantastic desktop environment if that's the kind of thing you're looking for. So that is it for this video, just a little bit of a ramble over why I think XFCE is so great. But just to remind you what I said at the beginning, there is no best desktop environment. There is nothing out there that I could say, this one here is the best, everyone should use it. It's just that thing doesn't exist, right? Every desktop environment has its pros and cons, even GNOME that I constantly harp on has some good points, you know. KD Plasma has its good and bads. Budgie, good and bads. XFCE, good and bads. You know, Cinnamon, good and bads. You get the idea, right? Over and over and over again, I will continue to preach this, that the best way to find out what's best for you is to try it. And that's the only way that you're ever going to find what's best for you. You cannot get the answer to what is the best desktop environment by asking someone else. It's just, it. that's not the way it works. So, 
That is it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.